Right, so uh, my, the title of my presentation was supposed to be uh, Building a Successful Technology Company. And uh, when I think about the title like this, I always think that there is some kind of a secret process, like alchemy, which you can use and you can take uh, standard components and make uh, a technology company out of it, like gold. Or I think about a variety of different books which you actually can use to make money. Like some of those books are here, like how to build a billion dollar business. Uh, it, 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 it is just very simple. You read this book and you build a billion dollar business. And, and that's the same way with technology company. And unfortunately, uh, reality is that uh, building technology company is very much uh, about uh, tedious, long, hard work, uh, kind of like a planting seeds uh, for a rice field. Uh, and and uh, there is uh, not that much excitement about it. And, and talking about how to do it is also quite difficult because unlike with rice fields where you can actually replicate the process many, many times, it's uh, quite different from one case to another. So despite uh, the organizer desires to have me talk about how to build a successful technology company, I decided to talk about something a little bit different. I decided to talk about which specific mistakes you can make when building technology company. Uh, some of the things which I will talk about, they will look quite a bit general. I have to tell you that Unfortunately, in my career, I've built a lot of companies. It's much better to build one large company. And recently, we have reviewed uh, uh, hundreds and thousands of projects in Rune Capital, and we have invested in a uh, uh, couple dozen companies, and we have a couple other dozen companies in consideration. So uh, the difference in what I will talk about and perhaps some common knowledge in general is that these are the mistakes we actually see in various stages. So the first stage, the first uh, 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 problem of the company, why the companies actually fail, is uh, the team. Uh, you know, I'm often asked what is more important, the team or the idea? And reality is that if you have a bad team and good idea, you probably won't succeed, most likely. And you have a good team and bad idea, you might have a good chance. The team is extremely important, and it's extremely important that you should have a clear leader, single clear leader in the team who manages and drives the company forward. There is a lot of problems associated uh, with uh, the fact that when you don't have a clear leader, when you start a technology company, you should always think who is the leader, who is a single person uh, who is associated with the company, who is the person who drives this forward, and, and why the team is special and relevant for this uh, task. Building the company is never easy, and it's never uh, a process which will uh, be enjoyable all the time. It will be emotionally quite stressful. Uh, you know, if you think about the team and the leader, uh, there is this one, this movie which I watched, uh, which I recommend you. Who watched this movie? That's Boot. You should watch the movie. It's a 1981 movie. It's about 31 years old, but, uh, and, and it's about a German submarine. So it's not particularly politically correct topic when you talk about it in Russia or in Ukraine, but uh, it's still a, a very good movie about uh, how uh, the team dynamics work in the case of a very complicated team situation, such as submarine during World War II. Uh, the second problem, and this is the problem which are fundamental when you start the business, is the problem when you don't have a, a scalable business model. In many of the presentations which we've seen uh, in the startup competition, which I suppose to judge, we actually, sir, we actually see this <coughs> problem. A lot of the uh, startups are not really building a company, they're building a feature, or rather they're building a gadget. And you know, every time I see such presentation, it reminds me of in-flight magazines in the United States. When you uh, fly in one of the airlines in the United States, you see an in-flight magazine, and they sell all kinds of gadgets, for example, uh, on, on this screen, you can see uh, the, the shower, which can you know, have different colors. Uh, or you can see uh, this chair, not sure what this chair is for. Or other gadgets, such as, for example, this wonderful step for small dogs to climb uh, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the bed. And, and you can actually argue that it's a large market. You know, there are 400 million dogs in the world. And, and if 20% of them are small, that's a $5.5 billion market, right? 
it looks like a scalable business model. In reality, it's not. Majority of owners don't want their dogs to be on the beds. Majority of owners don't have money to buy it, and they won't buy it, and it's really a gadget problem. Vast majority of the business plans which come to Runa Capital, and we receive about 400 business plans every month, are gadgets. And they are not scalable business problems. They are solving some relatively small problem which is not really important enough to be uh, solved. It might be a good businesses, but in most cases, uh, uh, these are not venture fundable businesses, not startups in a definition of that word. The other problem which we see, and these are all kind of uh, problems before you even try to raise money, kind of fundamental problem with the business, is that there is a lot of businesses which are medium size or small size, which believe that they can scale in technology or they can survive in technology without funding. Uh, for a variety of reasons, here I, uh, chosen, we've chosen a picture of a narcissistic person who is just very happy and doesn't believe that anybody can help him. Um, you know, in a, in a lot of complicated uh, situations in life, you can come back, uh, you can come up with a decision by considering the situation from the end. And so if you look at the successful technology companies, there is uh, almost not a single company where the founder owns a very significant part of the company at the end when the company scaled up. You know, uh, uh, I think Zuckerberg owns about 20% of uh, Facebook. Bill Gates owned about 20% of uh, Microsoft. Uh, Larry Ellison owns about 25% of Oracle. Uh, Larry Page and uh, Sergey Brin, they own small percentage of Google. All of these people, to scale their business, needed partners, needed funding at some point, a variety of different partners for different reasons, uh, but uh, they needed partners. And uh, the, the reason why this is actually true is because in technology, you cannot sustain the business un unless you scale it, unless you own majority share. And in order to scale it, most likely you need to scale it globally, scale it again, tough global competition doing it, on your own, it's almost impossible. Doing it by self-funding the business quite often is impossible. Next, after you solve this problem, you have a strong team, you solve a strong problem, and you are looking for funding, you have problems presenting yourself. And that's a most common problem we see. People come with a very, very good idea, a very good team, but they can't explain their idea, and they can't explain uh, uh, who they are. And, and they don't raise money at the end, they become uh, irrelevant after some time. It is extremely important to make good impression on your partners, investors, and employees. And, and these are the people you will meet uh, when you build your business. Even in case you decide to not raise capital, you will still need to have technology partners. Even in case you will decide to not have technology partners, you will still need to hire people. You won't be able to hire good people unless you explain to them what you do, and you need to explain it really well. Um, the next problem we see is that majority of startups don't want to build mid-term and, and long-term business plans. So they don't really want to plan their business uh, for three, five, 10 years in the future. Uh, there are a variety of arguments which come up why this is not uh, uh, possible or not necessary, and, and the reality of that First of all, it's absolutely necessary to raise capital. Second of all, uh, you know, the plan itself might not be very useful. The process of planning, which you will go through with your investors, with your partners, with your co-founders, with your team, is extremely useful. And in a lot of cases, people fail because they haven't thought about some basic things, which was possible to solve in the past. But unfortunately, the startups who build toy machine are not yet uh, existing, so you can solve problems which occur in the past. You better think of them um, in advance. A third real problem is uh, competition. People don't think about the competition. Every business has competition. If you don't have competition, your business must be a bad business. Competition comes in a variety of forms and, 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 uh, and, and sizes. In some cases, it could be very large. And, and you might argue it's not knowing what it's doing, and so you can do it better. In other cases, it could be very small and nice, like you did here, and, and it still will cut your head. Uh, there is always a competition. If you don't have a competition, you don't have a good business. 
and you should think about competition. You should position yourself why you will be able to win in com against competition, why you have an unfair competition, uh, unfair advantage against your competition. Competition is the reason why business fail, and it's also the reason why business doesn't raise capital uh, you know, in, in the form that you can't explain who it is. In fact, if you look at the presentations which we've seen in the startup competition here, uh, there is relatively little uh, which was told by majority of the presenters about their competition. Uh, at best, they would make it think irrelevant. Uh, next thing, which is quite opposite from too narrow focus, is too broad focus. A lot of businesses would uh, try to uh, present themselves as a solution for all problems. Uh, you know, you will have a marketplace which, which serves all kinds of uh, 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 customers and all kinds of partners uh, at the very beginning. And, and there is a classic book which uh, in Silicon Valley all but everybody read, uh, which is called Crossing the Chasm, uh, which talks about the fact that if you want to actually grow your business, you need to grow it by first finding a very specific niche as focused as possible but large enough for you to scale your business to the next stage, and then you need to go to the next niches, and then you can go broad market. You can't actually be better than everybody in everything. Yeah, you, you should just make it very, very simple. It's impossible. Even the best businesses in the world, like Facebook, like Apple, uh, they are not, uh, like Google, they have not started from being everything for everybody. For example, Facebook clearly started from being a social network for the top universities in the United States. Not schools, not all universities, not everybody, but top universities. And thereafter, and thereafter, and thereafter, and so on and so forth. So they clearly followed this strategy. And, and so you have to have a very clear strategy about it. Doing everything for everyone, it's clear, uh, uh, it's clear set for failure. Next thing, which we see as a huge problem, uh, and you know, which is a big surprise for us because we are not a professional investors. We've always been on the other side of the fence. We always were finding investors for our businesses. Is that majority of entrepreneurs, especially in, in Eastern Europe, especially in Ukraine and Russia, don't really know how to work with investors. Uh, there are a variety of different patterns here. One pattern would be that they would expect that investor is just money. And, and that's kind of the easiest pattern. The other pattern would be that they would believe that investor is kind of like a hired manager, and so you have to uh, ask investor in just about everything in your business. You know, the other pattern would be to not can understand what you need to ask investor to do what you shouldn't. The reality is that investor is a very, very powerful tool of machinery, uh, piece of machinery. For example, here is a cockpit of a modern plane. And modern planes can do a lot of different things, but you have to know how to use them. Uh, you can learn how to work with your investor, and, and that will save significant amount of time for you. It will also open a lot of new uh, possibilities. Uh, you should read your investment documents. For one thing, you should know what you need to get approved by your investors or not. We see a lot of advantages, a lot of the examples in our own case and in case of our uh, friendly investor companies where the problems in a startup business come from inability to work with investors, lack of understanding what to expect from investors. Next scene, and this is probably one of the more common things uh, to, to, to actually get in a startup is internal problems. Once a business raises money, there is a certain uh, amount of uh, feeling of success and there is a typical fight between founders and, and between founders and management uh, about who is the coolest guy in the business. Uh, and, and, you know, the fact is, in life, everything is not about fame. And it is not about power. And, and it is not about um, money. Everything is about time. One thing which you cannot buy, and, and unfortunately cannot even sell, is time. And everything about building startup business is about time of the management team, and it's about time of the key executives. And if you waste time on internal problem, already you're losing, especially you're losing if you have a fight which leads to significant serious problems in the company. And every time you have a reason to fight and disagreement you sh inside your team, you should remember that finding the way to find compromise is always better than fighting. Fighting is never good. 
Uh, next thing, which is quite common, which we see in many portfolio companies, is that a lot of the companies believe that mm, they know everything about how to build their business, and they don't really need help in certain processes, or certain processes are not important. There are, you know, in a way, several key business processes in every technology company. Building a product, business development, sales, marketing, support, operations, finance, in some cases, professional services. In reality, all of those processes are important. And if you don't know how to do any of those processes on a very, very good level, you might face problems. It, it is not a rocket science. Building planes is um, known for a long time, and you have planes built all over the world, but you should know what you're doing. Otherwise, despite the fact that there is a very basic piece of process you missed, uh, your plane will not fly. And, and so uh, that's one thing which investors can help you with. Um, another thing, which is a very common um, uh, thing which we see very well described in this other movie, which is called uh, There Will Be Blood. Who's seen this movie? Russian name of the movie is Neft. It's a very, very good movie about entrepreneurship. Uh, there is an understanding of a lot of startups, especially post-investment, that building technology business is easy that there should be some kind of a magic way of doing something and all of a sudden business will happen. And when they are presented with opportunities, they will tell, oh, this is too hard. We have to do a lot of things. And after we do those things, there might not be a good result. And we'll have to try again and again and again. And the fact is, this is how it is. This is how it is. In order to make money, in order to build big business, you need to try, and in most cases, you will have a failure, but in some cases, you will achieve success, and you won't have a failure very quick and very easy, and you will spend time, and you will spend money and effort on, on that. Uh, there is no easy way. You have to be used to the fact that it will be hard. The next thing, which is a final reason why investors are why the startups fail is the fact that they believe they stop paying attention to cash flow. You know, I'm, I haven't, um, I've raised money first time when I was in business for already 13 years. So before that, I've never raised external funding. So in a way, I was self-safe from this problem. I'm surprised to a huge extent how very uh, large percentage of founders who on the surface seem to be a very reasonable people, right after funding, uh, believe that they have now accomplished something and that they need to work as a large business. And, and they grow expenses literally uh, two to five times post-funding after before funding. You know, if the business is primarily about time, it's the second uh, thing the business is about and the startup is about, is about cash. The way how the businesses actually die is when they run out of cash. And, 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 and you know, when the businesses die without cash, it's never nice. It's ugly. I remember I had a conversation with one of the startups when I was trying to tell him, like, look, if you're going to be failing, you will run out of cash. That will be very badly uh, uh, <clears throat> reflected in your health. You will have health problems. He's like, are you threatening me? Are you trying to tell me that if I won't pay you money back, uh, you will kill me or something. I said, no, no, I'm not threatening you. But the reality is that when your business, your business you founded, the business you run, is running out of cash, it becomes ugly. You become very nervous and stressed, and you attack everybody around you, and everybody around you attack you, and so un undoubtedly it will be suffering. And, and again, the end suffering happens when you run out of cash. That means that you have to save money that means that you have to always think how to get more money from customers, from partners, from next round of funding, but cash is the main reason why businesses fail. Uh, you know, that, that's all about building technology business. The last one and a half minutes, I'll talk about uh, a few other things. This is our fund. I won't spend too much time on it. It's a $135 million fund. We invest in technology businesses which are heavy on software and heavy on technology we have a team of entrepreneurs to help businesses to avoid some of those problems. All those problems I mentioned, they sound obvious, but they come to you in a variety of different forms, kind of like in a, you know, in a religious world, devil will show up in front of you, and so you won't recognize them unless you have a strong mentor. 
Um, we help businesses in all of those four aspects of growing the business, product development, business development, operations, uh, taking the company to next level. And again, it's also important that investor is not there to manage the business for you. Investor is there to help you avoid mistakes, which is some of them I mentioned, but it's hard to catch. I had a specific case study of Gelastic here. I was surprised to uh, learn that Gelastic is actually participant in a competition, and in just about half an hour, Gelastic will talk about themselves. Won't spend too much time on it. Uh, this is a business which we've invested in at a very, very early stage. Uh, we invested in, in this business when uh, the four people who were key founders have not even seen each other. And, and now it's, it's uh, doing pretty well. And, and more exciting, perhaps, for some of you is that headquarter of this business from the engineering perspective is nearby Kyiv in Zhitomir. And there is uh, one other thing which I wanted to touch on about there is this uh, group of five uh, uh, organizations, Rune Capital, uh, Almas Capital, Sasha Galetsky, uh, UMH Group, uh, and Boris Loshkin, Victoria Tigib, Kantia Ventures, who is helping to organize this event and is a main host, and Vasily Khmelnytsky and Bionic Hill, and we will soon make a very important announcement, which I encourage all of you to look for, uh, about how we're going to help startups um, and um, entrepreneurs and engineers and managers in Ukraine to build uh, uh, scalable, world-class technology businesses. And as a part of it, I will avoid some of the important mistakes. Thank you. <laughs>